Okay, so let's do another example of the um, general addition rule. Um, so for probability, the probability of two events happening is the probability of one or the other. Um, so one plus the other minus the probability of the two occurring together. So there is an example here that deals with um, testing for THC, so drug testing, marijuana testing, um, um, testing humans for, for marijuana positivity. So one thing that really helps tackle this type of problem is a, a two-way table. So this is um, the general addition rule for probability. So a two-way table helps us see um, when this is true. Right, helps us see intersections. So what's stated here, we're going to try to diagram. So we had some number of subjects that were tested. And in those that were tested, um, some actually used and some did not. But whether you use or not um, is not always consistent with whether or not do you test for positive drug consumption. So let's say you these um, we, we use this top um, row to indicate those subjects that it actually used and the count of those who did not. And if we look at the 300 that were tested, um, in those 300, some actually did, some did not. But we're looking at whether or not they had a positive test result, um, or there was a negative test result. So let's say that there were um, a total of how many that ended up with positive test results. It looks like that number is 143 that had positive test results and 157 total that had negative test results. Um, some of those were false positives. Some of those were um, false negatives. So when we look at false positives, um, it means that it was a positive test, but they actually, um, it was a positive test, but they actually did not use. Um, so that would place them over here, false positive. And that number for false positives was 24. And then there are also some 157 negative. Um, of those negatives, three were false negatives, meaning that um, they were negative, so it resides in this row. Um, but did they use? Um, if they actually used but they ended up with the negative result that said they didn't, then we're over here with the false negative. Um, so that's what helps us uh, kind of complete
this information since there were 24 false positives and then there were three false negative results. So there were three here and 24 here. So, um, one thing to help us think about this is a positive is a yes, and then this is saying no. So if you have a yes and a no, um, then you have a contradiction. Or if you have a yes here, and you go down here with the no's, you also have a contradiction. So let's complete this. Um, since there are 143, if you take away 24, you're looking at 119, because these two coming across have to add up to 143. These two coming across have to add up to 157, which leaves this one here at 154. So now we can answer a few basic questions. Um, typically with two-way tables, it's often useful, helpful, to do the sums in the bottom row. Um, 154 and 24 give us 178. And we already have the sums across here, going down that column. So first question might be something like this. What's the probability? Of, um, of a false negative occurring. Of a false negative occurring for someone who actually used they're using, but the test says that they didn't, so it's a negative, but it's a false negative, um, as in many of our problems, we're just looking for a count, um, so what's the prob probability of a false negative for someone who actually used, so we know that there were three um, that used truly but yet they ended up with a negative test result. So that number um, given that, um, that they actually used what we're looking at is the number who actually used is the um, the divisor here. So there were 122 that actually used out of the, and there were three out of that 122 that tested positive, uh, um, that that tested negative. So another way to think about this is of those who actually used, how many um, were um, generated or how many were part of a, a, a group where there was a false negative? So that's a limiting factor once we say for those who actually used then we're just looking at 122. How many of those um, were false negatives? So the wording um, is, is everything here. Let's try another one. What's the probability of selecting someone?
positive test result. Okay, so the probability of selecting someone who had a positive test result or used, um, this is someone who used marijuana. So what is the group that we're looking at? What's the probability of selecting someone overall, just from the entire group who had a positive test result? or someone who used marijuana. So if we go back to this and we look at the number of people who had a positive test result would be my 143. Um, so that fraction is out of the 300. And then the number of people who actually used marijuana is 122. So what we're looking at is 119 plus 24 to give us the 143. And for this one, it will be 122 for those that actually use. So the question is, what's the probability of selecting someone who had a positive test result? say a positive test result or use marijuana. Um, so those are two different groups. The number that used marijuana, I think we said that was 122. So that fraction then is going to be 122 out of 300. So it's going to be the probability of selecting someone who had a positive test result plus the probability of selecting someone who actually used. So it looks like it's going to be the 143 plus the 122. Um, but notice that when I add those two up, <coughs> I will have counted my 119 twice because that 119 is, is both. And look at where 119 resides. He is the intersection of those two. Positive test result and they actually used. So I will end up subtracting this um, double count, double dip. So minus um, the intersection of those two events right there, this and that occurring at the same time. And so that's going to be my 143 over 300 plus my 122 over 300 minus um, probability of those both occurring, which is uh, 119. And when we do the math on this, it looks like um, what is that? 3 over 300. So 143 plus 6. 143 plus 3 is 146 over 300, which is about 48.7%. Um,